Good evening. How is everyone? Glad you're all here. Welcome to Millennium Stage. And now please enjoy a night with Jackie Moms Mabley. Lord, you told me if I go on stage and take you with me, that you would help me. Help me take care of myself and my child. Well, here I go. Come with me! everybody. How my children doing? I'm so happy to be there. Is that your wife? Uh, you out to have a good time, sir. Oh, bless your heart. So pretty. Girl, if I had my chest out like that, I'd be dead for six o'clock. <laughs> Ain't no way I could live. Oh, bless your little heart. You know, Moms like to see boys and girls that she grew up with and everything, you know. But I got here this afternoon for rehearsal, and then one of my old girlfriends, I hate to say one of my girlfriends because I'm older than she is. There she was standing up there, all big and fat, hair all up on top of her head, and just a grinning at me with one tooth in front. Looked like she got a job somewhere snapping holes and donuts or something. Ah, <laughs> oh, I tell you, but she looked at me and she said, girl, you sure look good. I looked at her. I said, why don't you fix yourself up? Your husband dead. You got all them houses and that insurance and everything. Fix yourself up. She looked at me. She said, you make me feel so bad. I said, I don't care if I do. Fix yourself up. She said, you make me feel like committing to a die. She said, how you commit to a die? I said, I'll tell you what to do. First, you get you a good 38 and load it up all the way around. Measure three inches below your left breast and pull the trigger. Don't you know that fool went home and shot herself through the knee? <laughs> Titties must have been hanging all the way down here somewhere. Now. Then while I'm down, let me see. I'm going to sit down. Everybody else sitting down. I'm standing up here like a fool. Maybe I better turn this way. Keep you honest. Oh, oh but clean. I was down there, and one of them little girls, she was sitting down there, just crying her eyes out. I said, daughter, what's the matter? What you crying for? She said, I'm in love. I said, you said what? She says, I'm in love. I said, daughter, do you know what love is? She says, I think so, because I can't eat, and I can't sleep. I said, oh, daughter, you got indigestion. <laughs> Let mom tell you about love. I said, see, love is like a game of checkers. You got to be careful what man you move. Because, honey, you moved the wrong man, and he kept you or jump you. He'll tear your Mason Dixon line up. Well, I come on the train. I should have come on the airplane, but the first time I was on the airplane, oh, honey, it scared me so bad. We hadn't got up no higher than this building, and all of a sudden something went plunk up in my head. I called a little girl. I said, darling, come here, help me. I can't hear nothing. She said, well, moms, chew this chewing gum. Maybe that will help you. Well, I chewed and chewed. It didn't do me no good. I said, daughter, come here. No, no, come here. I can't hear nothing. Help me. 
She said, well, moms, drop your jaws. And I misunderstood her. <laughs> I did. I caught a terrible cold. <laughs> now, here it is. For the benefit of you that don't know me, the name is Mom. That's M-O-M forwards, M-O-M backwards. Upside down, wow. <laughs> oh, honey, don't let my looks deceive you, because I done been where the wild goose went. The man first night home from the army, you know. Telephone kept on ringing. Well, he got up, found the answer to the phone, got back in bed. His wife said, who was it, darling? He said, ah, some prank looking for the weather bureau. Kept on asking, was the coast clear? <laughs> uh, did you hear the one about the two old maids? Y'all hear that one? Two old maids was walking down the street. One said to the other one, I smell hair burning. The other one said, well, maybe we's walking too fast, you know. That was a little bit warm for you, wasn't it, baby? Ha! I got another one I can tell you about, but I got to tell you that one after the show. I got a song I want to sing for you. Now, I know, baby. Somebody feed that baby. <laughs> it's written in a common key, just as common as I can get it. But I need your help with it. Luther, play, play my other song about two old maids. Is that my key, Luther? Your key? Well, either I'm out of whack or the piano's out of tune once. Now, this is your part. Y'all gonna help me, right? Yeah. Okay, here it is. This is what you sing when I say sing. Two old maids was laying in bed. Sing that. My turn. After a while, I heard one of them said, I know a place where we can play, where we can both hide away. It's Fernando Hideaway, Ole, today. Sing. They didn't sing that time. Sing, y'all. After a while, I heard one of them say, starting with the ABC of it. Right down to the X, Y, Z of it. Help me with the memory of it. Teach me tonight. Sing. Two old maids was laying in bed. After a while, I heard one of them saying, A tisket, a tasket. Get your hands out of my basket. <laughs> Sing. After a while, I heard one of them say, Now you blow through here. The music goes round and round. Oh, 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 oh. Sing. After a while, I heard one of them say, Brush your teeth with cocaine. Cocaine into a cream because it leaves your breath in a fresh way if you, if you use cocaine. Sing. Keep up with me, Luther. Sing. After a while, I heard one of them say, now I'm going to be frank with you. The other said, no, I'm going to be frank with you. You was frank last night. <laughs> Sing. After a while, I heard one of them say, now if that isn't love, it'll have to do. Until the real thing comes along, I said, and that's the story 
of the two old maids. Yeah! Uh, you know, a man had a habit of talking in his sleep. Now, his wife's name was Jenny. He laying up there, talk about Alice. Oh, Alice got up in the morning. Wife was mad. She looked at him. She said, who's Alice? He said, huh? What you talking about? He said, you heard what I said. Who's Alice? He said, oh, baby, that's just a horse I bet on the other day. So he go on to work. Come back home, said, what's new, baby? She said, oh, nothing. Only your heart's called two or three times a day. <laughs> Man, they bought him one of them new fashion guns. Gonna go quail hunting. Well, he went out there, had his gun, flipped up there, and all of a sudden, he couldn't find no whale, no quail, but he heard that there was some coming. So he took that gun and he said, I'll go over to the graveyard and walk over there. And then he shot at a big flock of quail and they shot him up into an open grave, you know? And he's down there in that open grave talking about, it's cold down here. It's cold down here. So a whiner come walking through the graveyard and he, heard that voice saying, it's cold down here. It's cold down here. He looked over there and said, well, no wonder you're cold. You want kicked all the dirt off of you. Put the dirt back on you. Oh, I tell you, man went into a psychiatrist's office. You know, if you see anybody acting normal nowadays, they probably just not well. I mean it. I ain't never seen so many people going in sanity in my life. Man walked in the psychiatrist's office going, poo, poo, ooh, butterflies, poo, poo, flying all over me. Psychiatrist come out. He said, what's the matter? He said, poo, poo, butterflies flying all over me. Psychiatrist said, well, poo, poo, don't put them on me. <laughs> Everybody crazy. Oh, I tell you. I went over to the asylum. My girlfriend was over there. You know, I hate to say my girlfriend because moms like to think everybody that her friend is, is, is hip, you understand? But this old girl liked it, young men like myself, you dig? No, I don't like no old man, honey. No, oh, 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 oh. Old man can't do nothing, don't want you to do nothing. You know, I just as, I just as well is pay a young man's way from here to California than tell an old man the distance. <laughs> Can't nothing no old man can do for me except bring me a message from a young man. <laughs> ah, but I went on over there anyway. You know, it was my girlfriend. And she, she was over there because, um, like I said, she liked the young man. Well, what happened to her is not like what I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm going to be good to anybody I go with, but I ain't going to let some young man tell me, oh, moms, you look good. I don't care if you ain't got no teeth. You look good to me. You send me. Send him? Where? I dig everything. I got a mirror. I know what's happening. But she believed that job, you know? and give a man all her money. And when she give him that money, he done the paper doll, cut out. And she went stone crazy. <laughs> but that was my girlfriend, I had to go see her. A Jewish man and a Chinaman was standing on the corner arguing about what the, the, the greatest man would ever live. Well, the Irishman walked by and said, I'll give you $500 cash if you can tell me who the greatest man would ever live. 
So the Chinaman said, Shen Kai Shek. He said, no, no. The Jewish man said, St. Patrick. <laughs> and the Irishman said, yes, yes, I'm giving $500 cash. And you could hear him as he was walking away. He said, I had Moses in mind, but business is business. I was standing on the White House lawn the other day. It was me, Bo Diddley, Adam Clayton Powell, Governor Phobos, and Big Maybell. Ah, Big Maybell. All of me, why not take? Ain't no way in the world nobody can take all of Big Maybell. That's a big girl. I tell you, why don't y'all vote for me to be president? That's right. I can't do it no worse. I, I, I mean, if Elizabeth can run England, I can run America. What does she got that I didn't used to have, and where can I get it again? That's what I want to know. But we were standing out there and everything, talking about them things, you know, some of my government work and everything. And all of a sudden, they come talking about the children. Now, you know, if anybody want to get mom mad, you start talking about my children. Because the thing is, I like to see children live. Because I didn't get a chance to live. I didn't. And now I'm old, and they choose me like a young man. And I'm guilty. <laughs> and I'm going to get guilty as soon as I can get me some more guilt. It was, we were talking about different things and everything. And I told him, I said, you know, I've been telling you for years to tell these children the truth. Stop telling them my old fairy lies and them old mother goose fairy lies. I'll tell you the truth. If I had my way, I'd burn every one of them books up. Mom's um, uh, wrote her a mother goose book, and I want you to buy it. I tell them, too, the truth. You tell them that Mother Hubbard had gone to the cupboard to get her dog a bone. Ain't no truth in it. The dog was lucky to get a bone out in the yard. Mother Hubbard had her gin in the cup and didn't want them squares to get it. <laughs> you tell them that Jack and Jill ran up the hill after some water. Ain't no water running uphill. You know better than that. <laughs> you tell them that the cow jumped over the moon. Now, that's the only truth up in there. The cow did jump over the moon. You would have jumped too. That man's hands was cold. <laughs> You tell them that the wolf ate up little red riding wood grandmother. I tell them that if he did, he must have used tenderizer, tough as old grandmother was. <laughs> that, that wolf had a hard time, honey. My brother, 15 years old, my grandmother and them back there in North Carolina, they keep telling him ding dong dell, pussies in the well. He got drowned like a fool. <laughs> Peter, Peter. I ain't read up enough on him yet. I'll talk about him later. <laughs> but buy mom's book and tell these children the truth. Stop telling them about the good old days. What good old days? When? Where is they at? I was here. Talking about things sure ain't like they used to be. Things sure ain't like they used to be. Well, I'm damn glad of it. Let mom tell you what happened to me in the good old days. Now, it was the custom of the time for your parents to choose who you used to marry. You couldn't do nothing you wanted to do. Your parents did everything for you but work and you worked like a dog. 
get up five o'clock in the morning, go chop wood, go out and bring in the water, and you come in, you get some molasses with some more grease. Then you go out later on and get some molasses and more grease. The pans got the meat and you got the grease. Then they look at you and honey, you better do what they tell you to do. If you didn't, they knock your brains out. My brother been hit so much in the mouth with a backhanded lick that his tongue, his, his, his lip is all the way down here. Look like he wearing a to the next sweater. <laughs> Everything your parents pick for you to do. Who do you to love? Who do you to go out with? Imagine somebody picking somebody you got to spend the rest of your life with. Make no difference what condition it was in. If daddy said so, that was it. And I was nothing but a child. 14 going on 15 years old, and just as cute as I want to be. <laughs> Hair hanging down my back. You see, I'm half Indian, you know. <laughs> and the other part, the beauty parlor takes care of that. <laughs> then this old, dead, puny, moldy man. I mean, honey. I mean an old man. He's so old that Santa Claus looked like his son. <laughs> he was two months older, two months older than time. <coughs> he was so old, we couldn't even wash him. We had to grease him. <laughs> joint by joint. At least the important ones anyway. <laughs> Oh, he was so ugly, he hurt my feelings, and that's the truth. <laughs> he was so ugly, he had to tip up on a glass to get a drink of water, and I'm not lying. <laughs> and ain't no need to say I didn't try to kill him, I did. <laughs> Rat poison agreed with him. <laughs> that's right. If I tell you. It wasn't nothing in the world that man wouldn't do for me. I guess it wasn't nothing in the world I wouldn't do for him. So we just went on through life doing nothing. <laughs> ah, he was so old that when his sister died, we went to the funeral. And Undertaker come over and tap him on the shoulder and said, how old are you, Pops? And he said, 91. He said, well, ain't no need you going home. And his brother was older than he was and married a girl 13. He didn't live for five days. <laughs> First time I ever seen him bury a man with no top on the casket, he laying up there like. <laughs> Took three undertakers a week to get the smile off in his face. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, he 99 years old and start the drinking. Ain't that something? I told him, I said, look, I'm gonna give you a little demonstration. I went outside and got me a warm and put over in a glass of water. Little warm swim all around and everything, y'all nice. And I took that same warm out and put over in a glass of whiskey. It swam around there for a couple of seconds and then it killed over dead. I said, what does that prove? What does that prove? He said, it proved that if you drink whiskey, you won't have worms. <laughs> the nearest thing to death you ever seen in your life, his shadow weighed more than he did. He did. But I shouldn't talk about him, though, because they say you mustn't say anything about the dead unless you can say something good. So... He's dead good. <laughs> I tell you, children, the undertaker come ask me. You know I hadn't cremated. I was determined he was going to get a heart one time anyhow. <laughs> come telling me, I'm going to come back and scratch your eyes out. I buried him face down. 
The more he scratched, the further away he get. <laughs> but I did have him cremated. I, I did have him cremated. Undertaker come ask me, did I want the ashes? I told him, hell no, burn them up too. I don't want nothing. <laughs> but I'm getting back to the White House. We stand out there and talking. I saw Lyndon coming across the lawn. I says, Lyndon, <clears throat> Lyndon, boy, <clears throat> come here. I said, now, how old do you, you expect the child to be before you hip it? Now, for the benefit of you that don't dig jive, hip means wide. I said, you talking about juvenile delinquency or whatever you talking about? The time to hit a child is the minute that is born into this world. Seem like you put the needle on that record all you want to. But until you put the needle on the record and you speak, it don't register. But when you speak, it registers. Therefore, your first words to that child is that child's lifeline. But instead of doing that, you go put your old dirty hands in front of that baby's feet, come talking about this little piggy went to market, this little piggy went to home. That baby don't want to know nothing about no damn pig. <laughs> You're teaching it about the dirtiest thing in the world, a pig. And then get a little older, what do you do? You send it off to school and say, go to school, baby. Watch the lights. Damn the lights. Watch the cars. The lights ain't never killed nobody. Then to get a little older and you want to come out and have a nice time like you're having tonight, you got to get babysitters sitting with them and choking them and throwing them down the stairs and carrying on. Whenever you had just hit that child from the beginning, you could have said, listen here, old man, I hit you. You on your own. But instead of that, you go, go to sleep, babies. The fairies is coming to look out after you. There he go to have his little life looking for a fairy. And then when he finds one, it's a drag. <laughs> so my man sitting out there last night come asking me, did I have a fairy godfather? I told him no, but I got a brother ain't too sure about those. <laughs> Southern trees, they're strange fruit, blood on the leaves, and blood on the roof, black body swinging in the southern breeze strange fruit hanging from the poplar tree pastoral scene from the gallant sound, the bulging eyes and twisted mouth, scent of magnolia, sweet and fresh, the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is the fruit for the crows to pluck, for the wind to scatter, for the rain to suck, for the sun to rise. 
heart for the trees to try. Yeah. is a strange and Paris, Texas, the blackest soil and the whitest people. That song reminds me of the time I was riding through Texas on a Jim Crow train. They were dragging this colored man to the stake. They were fitting to burn him. Some white folks treated colored folks like sh My name is Loretta Mary Aiken. I'm from Bazaar, North Carolina. My daddy, Big Jim Aiken, and my mother Mary supported me while I was out here trying to be a star. My daddy and mama were big, important people in Bazaar. My daddy got killed on his fire engine. The old white town sheriff raped me. I got pregnant both times I had to give my children away. I did get married once. In fact, I lived right here in D.C. over there on 1st and R Street. Oh, honey, if it wasn't for my mother Mary, she's the one that sustained me while I was out here trying to be a star. I used to perform with all the great ones, Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington, and just between me and you, Langston Hughes was quite charmed by me. Oh, honey, but when I hit the big time, I was in all the plays and shows. Did you ever see me in the showboat? What about at the Royal Theater? I know you must have seen me over at Howard. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh, People always want to know how I got into this business. Well, I started out as a dancer with butter beans in them. And then I spoke to God because I found myself in New York. I found myself pregnant. I, I needed him to help me, help take care of me and my child. And you know, God spoke to me just like he's speaking to me, like I'm speaking to you right now. And said to take him with me go on stage and everything will be all right. When your soul world feels dark and gloomy and you feel with fright, all you got to do is say hallelujah, everything going to be all right. Just because being mistreated don't mean the whole world wrong. Just have faith in God your country, keep on singing this song. Make no difference what people do, just keep your faith in God. Everything gonna be all right, everything gonna be all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Everything gonna be all right. Just knock, that door will open, see, and you will find. But you try to find your fears that's gonna blow your mind. Nah, nah, nah. Wake up singing early in the morning. Keep on singing through the night. Just sing it over and over, and everything gonna be all right. All right, sing all right. All right. All right. there on that last bit. Oh, it's going to be all right. 
Now I'd like to do for you another song, the opera. Oh, yes, honey, I do opera. <laughs> this ain't the first hall I've been in. I've been in Robert Hall. And now for the opera. It's too loud, Luther. It's too loud, Luther. It's too damn loud, Luther. <laughs> now, um, play the opera like you're supposed to, darling. Play it like you play it for a big opera star, like Big Maybell, one of them opera stars. Now I ain't going to sit at the back of no bus and I'm going to the white folks' school. I'm going to praise the Lord in the white folks' church and I'm going to swim in the white folks' pool. I'm going to vote and vote for whoever I please and I thumb my nose at the Klan and I double damn to come out behind them sheets and face me like a man. They don't scare me with their bomb threats. I say what I want to say. And ain't a damn thing they can do about it. Cause I ain't going down there no way. <laughs> and you know why? Because it took the marshals, army to JFK, and I don't know who. Every law and every rule to try to get one boy in the Mississippi school. A school days, school days. Barnett sell the hell with congressional rule days. Lit pipes and pistols and black jacks too. These are the books that they took to school. They don't study science or history. They only study hate and bigotry. They've been scaring the heck out of you and me since we was a couple of kids, kids, kids. What kind of fool is this? The school they call Ole Miss. I know that sticks and stones can break my bones, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Why can't we pretend we love our foreign friends? When they can plainly see what kind of fools we've been. So take me out to the ball game, to the campus, honey. If we don't win, it's a shame. Cause what I trust in the law and the national guard will get in. Just the same. Keep on knocking, honey. They'll let us in after a while. <laughs> Ain't it funny how when some people are in trouble, they want to put you in trouble too? They won't mind their own business. Ain't that funny? <laughs> There's men standing on the gallows. It was a white man and a colored. They had robbed a bank, shot a tailor, killed a dog, and shot an innocent bystander. White man standing up there crying, talking about, I don't want to be home. I don't want to be home. Colored fella said, oh man, shut up. We um, robbed the bank, shot the tailor, shot an innocent bystander, stole that money. We gonna be hung, we deserve it. So stand up here and take it like a man. White fella said, that's easy for you, cause you used to it. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I just got back from down there. You know, the scorch curtain. Selma. They put handcuffs on moms. They sure did. If President Johnson would go down there and get a tan, they put handcuffs on him too. <laughs> well, while I was down there, there was a college boy. He was educated. He went down there, going full. Walked up there, and the man looked at him and said, let me hear you say the Constitution backwards and forwards. Well, the colored boy said the Constitution backwards and forwards. The white man looked at him and said, let me hear you say the Constitution backwards and forwards. I mean the Bible, backwards and forwards. So he said the Bible, backwards and forwards. There was a Chinese newspaper over there. He said, let me read that, let me hear you read that paper. Read that paper. He said, it says, it don't matter what I say, you ain't gonna let me vote no how. When I was living down in New Orleans, wasn't many years ago, it wasn't yesterday. The white folks said, go north, old woman, I'll gladly pay your way. So I took their money and I took their advice, and I'm very sad to say, I'm a freedom rider from the South. yippee yi yo yippee yi yay Damn if I ain't glad I got away. Goodbye, Joe. Me got to go for me, oh my, oh. I can't stand the way they treat me on the bio. I ain't gonna stop in Illinois or Ohio. Just send my mail and care of Adam Clayton Powell at the Harlem Wild. <gasps> Give me a home where I'm free to roam, where the dark and the white folks all play together, that is. Oh, as seldom is heard. A discouraging word Like lift that barge Tote that bell Go to the polls to vote And they land you in jail A million million kisses I'll deliver Just as soon as I see that good old Hudson River And they can rock up by each other in a Dixie melody It's not for me <laughs> But you know, I was driving through North Carolina on my way to Florida and I got a red, t red uh, 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 ticket, you know, a ticket for running through the red light Police stopped me and everything says, um do you realize you run a red light? And I told him, I said, well, I saw all the white folks going on the green. I thought the red was for the color. <laughs> you laugh if you want to, I didn't get any ticket. <laughs> then this friend of mine was coming from Texas, had him a big white Cadillac, pulled up into the gas station. White man came to look at him. He said, fill it up, fella. White man looked at him and said, do you know where he's used that boy? Well, let me just show you and give you a little demonstration. The white fella went in his pocket, got out a quarter, threw it up in the air, took out his pistol, shot a hole in the middle of it, and caught it right in his hand. 
So my friend looked at his wife and said, baby, hand me an apple out that bag. So she took out the apple and gave it to him. He took the apple, threw it up in the air, out with a switchblade, cut it, peeled it, cored it, and caught every bit in his hand. The white man said, how much gas you want, mister? <laughs> Just was check you all, too. <laughs> yeah. Little girl was over there crying, you know. Two men fighting and carrying on. So I went over there, because you know I wanted to know what was going on. I said, baby, what, what's happening? What's going on? They just fighting and carrying on. She said, my daddy and that other man just fighting and carrying on. I said, well, which one is your daddy? She said, that's what they fighting about. <laughs> then we look down the street there. There's a little boy standing on the corner just crying his eyes out. Old man walked over to him and said, what's the matter, son? Why are you crying? He said, I can't do what the big boys do. Old man start crying too. <laughs> Listen, my children, and you will hear about the real midnight ride of Paul Revere. Now, he had had him a couple of mint juleps, <laughs> got on his horse, and went clickety clank, clunkety clunk. Clickety clank, clunkety clunk. Got off his horse. Bam, bam, bam on the door. Lady come to the door. How is it? He said, This is Paul Revere. Is your husband at home? Well, he upstairs watching television. He said, Well, tell him that the British are coming. Got back on his horse. Clickety clank, clunkety clunk, clickety clank, clunkety clunk. Got off his horse. Bam, bam, bam on the door. Lady come to the door. Who is it? He said, this is Paul Revere. Is your husband at home? Yes, he's over there fixing the car. He said, well, tell him that the British are coming. Got back on his horse. Clickety clink, clunkety clunk. Clickety clink, clunkety clunk. Got off his horse. Went to the door. Bam, bam, bam on the door. The lady came to the door and said, who is it? He said, this is Paul Revere. Is your husband at home? She said, no. He hasn't come home from the office yet. Paul Revere goes, You get that one tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I like to forget. Michael told me that some. Le Whoa! <laughs> Michael told me that some lady by the name of Helen Hunt found a lady's pocketbook. So, if you lost your pocketbook, you can go to Helen Hunt for it. Michael, I'm about to run out of time. Michael told me that he don't pay no overtime, and I don't do none. <laughs> shining light, they'll be waiting at the end of the road. There are going to be thorns in my path, but I'll just wear a smile, because in a little while, all my paths will be nothing but roses. Let it rain fall from above. I don't mind, because the ones that I love will be waiting. End of the road. Good night, children. I love you.
Thank you for joining us at Millennium Stage. As we prepare for another performance, we ask that you help us.